I got paid $41,230 for something that I built in five hours. And so you know it's not clickbait. I'll put a result on screen to show you what I actually got paid. Now, 99% of AI automation advice is frankly wrong. The secret is not complicated workflows. And in this video, I'm show exactly how I sold a five hour build for over $40,000. How I found, pitched, and secured the deal so you can do the exact same thing in your business. Now. This concept of how I acted this revolved around what I call the 10 to 100 strategy. Now, you may not know this about me, but I actually sold my last automation business. And I closed this deal before I had any online following at all, just to show you how possible it actually is. Now, what was core to it is this 10 to 100 strategy. So in my last business, I had a product. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in and show you this because this is when I was in zero to one. I sold this product for, I believe it was around 20 pounds. Okay, crazy. Now. Very, very low price point, really high value for the thing that we were offering. But we had to arm wrestle people, literally like this, to try and get them to pay 20 quid. And their demands on this curve of, like, imagine this being D for demand, and the thing down here would be something like value. Their demands and expectations were through the roof. Conversely, I had products that we'd sold literally uh, six figures. Right, I'm gonna all these zeros on that. And those conversations were like so much easier. Like genuinely speaking, the higher value stuff was crazy. Now, the key concept I really want to drill home here is that in business, you know, with AI automations that we talk about a lot, you can solve any particular problem, but it is way more economical and more efficient to already find an existing system, because it's exactly what I did, that is currently profitable. And that is all I literally did. With this particular client, we found something that was already making the money. And what we did is made a very small change to that system to automate a part of it, which meant instead of making, I don't know, say for example, this much money, they made that much money. And this is what the power of the TAN to 100 system actually is for any business. And it's also true of the thing that I found personally in my businesses, right? This idea that it's easy to take something that works and make it better than it is to start from, as we say over here, zero to one. Zero to one requires most of the effort. So if you're targeting a business or you're trying to focus in the area of your own business that just isn't that profitable, it's so much more effort to get someone that doesn't know how to sell, to prospect, to get that first bit done than it is to find an existing system and make it way more profitable. And this probably leads you on to the second question of, well, what actually was it? And this connects perfectly to complexity. And to illustrate this, I have to bring up my community, which by the way, has all the agents, the blueprints, the guides to get you from not being able to spell AI all the way to the point where you literally become an AI native and kick ass so you can build profitable automations. This school community itself, when I set this up, I had the simplest funnel in the world, okay? I literally had like YouTube, right, to school. And from that really simple funnel, we've made over seven figures from doing that really simple funnel. Now, this is the nature of things that people really want to overcomplicate things. And if you've been on LinkedIn or Instagram, you've seen what I would call node porn, right? More ways is crazy automation. You know, this is maybe even a tame example, but just nodes that do just an infinite number of things. And I really want to lay home this principle for you because I want your business to win. I genuinely want you to kick ass with this. I don't want you to waste any of your time. I want you to crush it quickly. The key concept here, really, 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 really important, okay, is that simplicity and I must take the time to write this, crushes is way better than complex. Complexity, very key thing here. The automation that we saw didn't take that long to build. It was dead, dead, dead straightforward. It didn't have a bazillion different nodes that did this and this one comes over and it cuts your hair and this one buys you delicious coffee. I am back in Leeds, by the way, as you can see from the background. Man, it's great to be back in Leeds to get this coffee. I'm flying out again soon. Honestly, I can't seem to stick around the country that often. So it's fair to say that really simple things like basic meg.com workflows absolutely crush. So what we did practically, just to give you an example, and you know, guys and girls, it's like the automation itself isn't even that important. Genuinely speaking, it's the impact. And I, I want to reframe the way that you think about this in your business because it isn't about what's the craziest automation I can think of. The real question is actually, what is the right problem for us to solve? And then the way we do that is just the way that we do that. It may literally be this. Like, and I'm telling you, this automation, we basically got paid for this so regularly and it lasted, this wasn't like, um, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I got this like, I don't know, 8K a month automation, right? Uh, and it's like, cool, but then it lasts like two months. 
And then the client disappeared. Like this lasted for years. Like this wasn't a fly by night thing. This literally lasted for years. Like that's why I can say this with confidence because I didn't just start talking about automation in January. I built and sold an automation business. Like I, I have, I've done this. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, share it with you so you don't have to make those mistakes in your own business or if you're looking to sell this stuff. Cool. So what we did is we found a process that was um, effectively, like I said before, already making money, okay? Uh, and we there was literally thousands of people doing this thing. So we had what is known as scale. <laughs> uh, so it was easy to do. And basically what we did is we just automated it. So instead of, and I think the actual task itself was taking people five minutes each per person they were doing. And we said, hey, instead of it taking five minutes, we're going to do it automatically. And here's a cool thing about it as well, is it had several benefits. The key thing here is it had a time value to it. It had a financial value to it. And then crucially, and this is really good if you're going for bigger clients in your business, is it also had a risk element to it. So we hit it on what I would call the trifecta of these three things. This time spent, no more, let me take that admin off your hands. There was a literally and I'm gonna show you in a minute the actual uh, template that I used that I handed over to get a sign off on this. And I went from idea to signed uh, in a day with this stuff, like that's how cool it is. And then we had a risk, which is what happens if you don't do this? Like what are the potential implications of this thing that happening? And by just following that really simple framework, that's what we did. And we just automated a really simple process. So it's cool to understand those fundamentals and basics, but if you can't articulate that to somebody in business, because let's be fair, we focus a lot on in my community around AI operating systems. Basically, how do you systematize the stuff that works? Like, how do you get way more leads? That's basically what we look at, right? So I want to draw your attention to the actual document I did, and I pulled this because it's in the community. Let me just find out where this is. And I created this because I thought it was really important just to show you an example. Now, you'll notice this is actually uh, me and mine, right? I use emojis, that's my style, that's the way I rock and roll, that's the way I do things. I remember when I had a corporate job, right? And I was working full time. I had like a senior strategy role in a very large company in the UK. It was like Centrica, we did energy stuff. And it was cool, but I never felt like I could really express myself. And I had my ideas and I was like, I think this is the best way to do it. And everyone's like stuck on PowerPoint. I'm like, no, this is the old way. And when I built this business, like in the evenings and the weekends, and I was able to get that to a point where I could quit my job. It was like the best thing in the world. And one of the awesome things about doing this yourself is the fact that you can do things your own way and like articulate it in ways that you think are awesome. And I guess maybe that's why I include emojis a lot, but for me, I, I put a high emphasis on design. I think it's really important. So I very ever rarely do PowerPoint stuff. And I was kind of butting against the grain when I had my corporate job on that side uh, quite a few years ago. So I'll run through the psychology of this because whether you are selling AI or you're doing it for a business, this is really cool. So logo at the top. Uh, use that logo, don't use your logo. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing uh, your own logo somewhere. So I remember we had a complete pitch to us. Uh, we ended up spending thousands with these guys. Basically, they had a, they were very different because they showed us our logo and I was like, oh, that's so cool. So depending on the person you deal with, like, and it's tough to imagine this unless you're in that position, but you'll know because because you're, you're crushing it if you watch this video, right? Is that the they have very little time. So you've got to be able to articulate the proposition in a couple of sentences. So TLDR overview of what they do. And then the only thing I really care about is what does it do for me? Like you're watching this video most likely, put on the, you know, the, the beautiful jumper as well, but because there's something that you want, right? You maybe you want to leverage your own business. So there's a value you get. And it's like, get to the freaking point as quickly as possible about what it is. So here, I literally said, look, this is the scenario with Jack. And this is a scenario without Jack, with Jack, you get this a new income, you're gonna save this many hours and your failure rate, uh, so it's not plus 70, I should put a success rate. Plus, not, the, the failures aren't going up, the failures are going down. But the point is, and this is a good thing by the way, I wouldn't articulate it as minus 77% because cognitive, that's not great. I would say success rate. So everything needs to be numbers pointing upwards. Uh, why care? Like in a couple of sentences, why do we even care about this anyway? Good to know is a good one. I really like the good to know strategy because it's kind of like, there's always gonna be miscellaneous information when you're selling to your clients or, or projects. And the idea here is that we can kind of go bat, 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 like it's just a nice little catch-all where you can throw everything in there. Like, um, you know, this is ready to go in two weeks or some extraneous information. You ideally wanna embed yourself within the company if you can and get multiple stakeholders. One of the biggest risks I see in any clients, and you'll notice this in business as well, is that if you know what is known as, I'm gonna zoom in here, one person, Okay, and you only have that one relationship. A buddy of mine runs a very successful AI newsletter. 
and he can have incredible relationships with businesses. But if that person leaves, uh, they get on to zero. So you want to have multiple contacts in the organization. Super duper duper important. So we have that. We have the good to know. And then quite simply, what next? Give me a sensible one-click step that I can click on and be on my freaking way. What I also tend to do is add more detail if they want to. So it's like, look, this is the all you really need to know. But if you want in more detail, just push this button and watch me break it down in more detail. This could be a loom. It could be further documents to break down all these key points. What you'll often find with CEOs especially is they won't usually go and watch the 10-minute video. The fact that it's there and you've taken the time to really think about it from that point of view is usually enough. Obviously, don't make that dud and not do it, but the key is there. And then the click to start is done. That should really link to a contract that they can click up, have a rev review through it, sign it. They'll probably check with some of the people and then you'll be ready to rock and roll. P.S. If you're a business and you do want to take your profits from here to here, I'm going to put a link down below for my accelerator waitlist. We work with a very limited number of businesses to help them get from here to here. We have quite a few people on the waitlist, but you can apply down below. It is just literally as of the publishing of this video, because it'll be coming out tomorrow, just opened. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link down below. Uh, I'm really excited for that. We've had incredible results. Now, the last thing I want to bring you on to here, just as a concept, is if you want to secure this business, what is the best way to do that? And the key detail here of how you actually get these clients and a great way to begin that relationship is an assessment. The key concept being that what we can actually do is sell the assessment to the thing. But do not underestimate at any point the power of relationships. Relationships crush it, but it is your gift and your ability to create those relationships in the first place. In fact, when I sold my last business, one of the things that triggered that relationship is the fact that we got mentioned in uh, the Times newspaper. And you could say, well, that's pretty lucky. It is, but you create your own luck, right? Because what happened before that? Well, about, I would say probably five months before that, we had a journalist reach out, right? And this journalist... But I said, hey, we think your startup's really freaking cool because we're like a top 100 UK startup. It was so freaking cool, right? She said, I think your startup's really cool. I would love to interview you. And we said, freaking hell yeah. And then that led to the conversation. Then we got published in the Times. Then that led to a conversation with the company. I can do a full video on this if you want to. But that led to the conversation with the company. But how did the journalist reach out to us? Well, we applied for this other thing. And so it's like, they, they, they kind of sequentially go forward. So I said that to say, like, it's so key that you spend like so many hours of your day, like if you can, four or five hours a day on what we call revenue generating activities to get you that kind of exposure, you wanna be spending four plus hours a day on those revenue generating activities. And for the OS assessment, one of the things you wanna be thinking about is like, look, there's a million things you can do with AI. What are the key things that you do that? And we do that in the accelerator program that we have, looking at a business. And what we try to identify is this, and I've done this so many businesses now, is the largest constraining factor. We've got a really cool framework uh, that basically breaks this across four key things in business that you can only ever focus on at one particular time. And the idea is that we decide which of those four things it is, and then we look at, well, actually, what's the highest leverage thing we can do? And then we build an operating system we're based on the best practices that we found to deliver against the thing. Now, if you've got more information about that, uh, I'll put the link down below so you can check out the community and the accelerator. Uh, YouTube really thinks that you're going to love this video on screen. But in any case, have a beautiful week, and I'll catch you inside the next video.